I'm gonna say this, man. This is what made me make this video. Um, hopefully, Pretty Ricky doesn't mind me saying this. So, you know, um, Pretty Ricky is is doing pretty well for himself. So, you know, he texts me and he was on some, you know, he's looking at this car, cars plural, and you know, he's trying to decide on which one or whatever have you. Hopefully, he doesn't have a problem with me saying this. You understand? I'm not telling you all how much the car costs. The year, the make, the model of the car, or whatever. We're gonna do a video, both of us, um, sometime soon in the near future. And if he decides that he wants to tell you what he got and the make and the model of the car and the year, da 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 da, he'll tell you. Understand? But I definitely had to put this video out. He's gonna go more in depthness about it, but I just definitely had to put this out, right? Because both of us experienced PTSD, right? And didn't even realize it. Well, we did. You know what I'm saying? But we didn't know to the extent because both of us, is, you know, Pretty Ricky and I, we, we we pretty much have like solid minds. So it, it 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 really like shocked us, you know, when we found out that we suffer from the same fate that every other black man, woman suffers from, but specifically black men, right? So he's texting me back and forth like, you know, which, you know, car should I choose, this and that, and so forth, right? So, I'm like, I'm trying to understand why is it so difficult for him to, like, choose the car and, you know, the price and all of that, right? Because he can afford it, right? So, you know, we're going back and forth, and then he's like, yo, I'm, I'm feeling anxiety and stuff like that, and he gets furthermore into it, and I'm like, oh, shit! Like, for those that don't know, I don't like putting my business out there, but my, it was my birthday, you know, a couple of days ago, right? And I'm making it relevant. And the fam got me the, the um, Samsung S21 uh, 5G Ultra. So I'm stepping up on, <laughs> I'm stepping up on the videos from now on, right? But I wasn't happy in the very beginning. I wasn't because I know that this phone cost a grip. I got insurance on it. It cost damn near twelve hundred dollars, if not more, right? And I was on some shit like, "Yo, take that back to the store. I don't want it," right? Because for one, I felt as though that you shouldn't be spending that much money on me. And for two, I felt as though, like, even though I could afford that phone, I could afford to buy it. Even though Pretty Ricky got it first. So, if anything, I knew I knew by my peers, my, my brother, that I it's, it's attainable because he got the phone first. But still in my mind, I felt as though that I didn't deserve it and that I shouldn't have it. And right then and there... It dawned on me that I ha I suffer from post-traumatic slavery disorder just as well as, as, as Pretty Ricky because we both are saying in our minds that, yeah, we've reached a level of success, but now we don't deserve it. And something's bad going to happen. Because for, 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 for young dudes, we, of course, we're older than you all, right? To, to you millennials, you, your, your, your Generation Z or whatever, your, your 15-year-old, your 20-year-olds, your 25-year-olds. But to the older people, we're young. We're still young. So for some mature adults such as ourselves, right? We supposed to be having a time of our lives. This is going to be... This, this, these years are prime years. This is going to... This is a situation where you're going to make the most money ever in your life. And that you're supposed to be stable and secure. Here we are sitting back saying to ourselves that we don't deserve nothing that we have. And some of you all may sit back and say, man, come on, Langston, you, you got to be kidding me. But at the end of the day, a lot of you all can relate. I got guns. I have all types of devices. You know, I got, I mean, this, 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 this is going to take me to the next level on YouTube. Before I was dealing with the YouTube videos. But I already had a, a GoPro Hero 7. A Canon TI. Uh, excuse me, T3i. And another GoPro 4. 
already had like the the ring light and 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 um three stu matter of fact four studio lights. I only used three of them. I've had cameras that I gave to my children. But at the end of the day, it's like it's this anxiety. Like we we feel as though it can't not happen because so many bad things have happened in our lives. And, and to, to black men that we know to the point where it's like we watching over our backs, like something gotta happen. But guess what? You can't put that energy out in the air. Cause I remember like it was 2005 to be exact, right? Now I know you all are gonna start joking and laughing or whatever, but it is what it is. I don't care because I was smart about my, my, my hustle, right? So I remember I was selling bootleg CDs, right? Man. I made some amazing money, amazing money, selling bootleg CDs and movies, amazing, right? So I remember this one specific day, i never forget it, never forget it ever in my life, right? I just got off of the spot. So I used to do retail and wholesale, right? So retail, I used to set up in front of this Chinese food restaurant and this beauty supply store, right? Selling, you know what I'm saying? I did um, one for five, three for 10, and six for 20. So six CDs for $20. I would take, I would get the mixtapes from New York, you know what I'm saying? I'd go up to New York and get the mixtapes from Canal Street. And then the regular, regular CDs like 50 Cent, Jay-Z, I would go to Best Buy and buy them, right? So I wouldn't buy the bootleg version of the album. I would actually buy the real album and duplicate it off of the real album just to make sure that it was legit, right? I had me a copy machine, you know, I jewel cases, everything was straight professional, right? I had juke joint music. I had reggaeton, I had regular reggae, I had calypso, I had merengue, moringa, I, uh, not moringa, merengue, um, I had, I said, I had R&B, I had old school R&B, I had rap, I had old school rap, I had down south mixtapes, I had up north mixtapes, I had it all, right? Never forget. So I just made like 400 from the spot. That's six hours, 400, right? My man C called me up, never forget C. He would buy CDs from me, wholesale, right? The mother of my children used to burn up the print up the CDs for me, right? We had a deal going on or whatever have you. But anyway, he calls and she gets upset. Every time C calls, she gets upset because she knows that she's going to be burning about five to 600 CDs that night. Why? Because C is going to take everything I have. So I had about... 300 CDs left, right? He took everything. So I dropped the mother of my children off. She, you know, she stayed and she had her own shit. And then, never forget, I went back home, took off all my, you know, my jazzy clothes, you know, my big Enichi shirt and all the rest of the name brands that I used to wear. You know what I'm saying? I took off all that stuff, put on a regular V-neck t-shirt and some shorts and some flip-flops, right? I, I made a total, when C came and got the CDs or whatever, all together combined, I made about $800, right? All together. So I took about a couple hundred, put it in my, my little desk, right? So I was gonna pay the rent like that Monday or whatever, ahead of time. I was already ahead anyway, right? I took another three, 400, something like that, went to Wachovia, that's how far back it was because Wachovia now is Wells Fargo, right? Um. Went to Wachovia, deposited a couple dollars in there, and then I had another account, uh, bank account in Bank of America, and I had a separate account for Bank of America for my daughter. I put some money in there, and I put some money in my, my Bank of America account. Now, my Wachovia account was my, my personal savings. That Bank of America account was when we, was gonna, when we were gonna move to Charlotte, because at that time, I was living in Raleigh, right? So I had everything planned out. I went to go get the kids a pizza, and at that time, they had Hollywood videos. That's how far back it was. You understand for you millennials or young cats, y'all don't know what that is. It's, you know, they sell DVD, no, rented DVDs and VHS tapes. Um, so I went and got them some some movies, dropped the piece off the mother of my children's house um, and, and the DVDs, right? Never forget it. Went to go get gas. Went to go get gas. Went inside the gas station, paid $30, $40 to fill the gas tank up. I was driving at that time like a 2004... Um, uh, Chrysler Pacifica, right? All bootleg movies. So, the mother of my children, she had her own shit. I had my own shit, and we had a, a, a Chrysler Pacifica. It was a year old, right? All CD, bootleg CD money. 
I come out of the gas station and I stop. No lie, this is my word. I stopped in the middle of the gas station and I said, this is, is no way in hell that this could be my life. I went to Walmart. I bought some CDs for myself to watch for this that um that, that Saturday. Booked a flight for me to go to New York so I could um, buy some some clothes for my son. I caught the flight, came back, and everything collapsed. No lie, and I truly believe because. I put that energy in motion. I put that energy out there. So my point in making is that, and I know Pretty Ricky is looking at this, that we need to stop thinking. Stop thinking with a poor mentality. We need to stop thinking like something's going to happen because the minute that we, we continue to do that, something is going to happen. It is going to happen. And the reality of it is, is Pretty Ricky, you deserve that car. You deserve the place that you live in. You deserve the money that you make. You worked your ass off to get it. And the thing of it is, is I deserve this phone. If I didn't deserve it, my family wouldn't have got it for me. And at the end of the day, you know what's so funny? I'm gonna make the money back anyway. It's an investment. It's an investment. It's not like I'm. I'm see, this is the, this is another thing I was trying to, you know, trick my my head into thinking I don't deserve a twelve hundred dollar phone because, you know, I'll be like everybody else that goes out here and get 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 the latest thing and just be taking uh, uh, selfie pictures and all the rest of that stuff. But that's not what I'm gonna do with that. That's not what I'm gonna do with that this this this, this uh twelve hundred dollar phone. That's not what I'm gonna do with this. This is gonna make me some goddamn money. And I'm going to make a return on this investment. And that's how you should look at things. For those that suffer from PTSD. It's real. It's real. Yes, true indeed. We, we weren't slaves. We weren't picking cotton. But it's not. I'd rather have went through the physical than the mental. Once you enslave the brain. Once you enslave the mind. Everything else falls in line. It does. It's the truth. There's a lot of us out there that feel that we're not deserving of anything. And this is the reason why people, I'm not going to speak on a particular race, but you know where I'm coming from. <laughs> why do black people do that? I know why they do that, but they be like, they first they look left and right like, know them people <laughs> but yeah you know at the end of the day everybody can have a most pro prosperous and joyful life because let me tell you something ricky johnny and scott they don't go around saying i don't think i deserve this they don't julie Susie, sally they don't go around saying i don't think i deserve this no they get out there and they get it that plain and simple. The amount of shit that Pretty Ricky and I have been through together, like the shit that we've experienced, like I'm living with him, I'm sleeping on his couch, he's sleeping on mine, and then separate, like the shit that he's been through, I wasn't there for, but he's told me, and the shit that I've been through, I was, he wasn't there, but I told him, we deserve it. We deserve it, man. And I'm telling you, if you work hard and bust your ass, you deserve any and everything that you got right now and then some. Period. I love that you love this channel. Because being that you love this channel, it goes to show that I'm so diverse. I try, yo, I try my best to come up with, 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 with subject matter that's totally different from everybody else's and, and that other people should be covering. Because PTSD is real. It's real. I told Pretty Ricky, I said, listen, man, stop, stop that. Because you you don't you, you keep on doing that. You're gonna continue being the way that you are, and you're never gonna have anything. Now it's nothing wrong with 
with the places that I'm about to mention, the department stores, etc. But if if you want more, why would you, you, you see what I'm saying? But but I told him, I said, yo, you continue to have that, that state of mind that you don't deserve it, deserve A, B, and C, you're gonna continue getting pre-owned cars. You're gonna continue eating at Applebee's. You're gonna continue shopping at Ross. You're gonna continue buying two, and this is, I'm not saying that this is what he's doing. I'm just saying that this is, this is a lot of people's thought, frame of thought. You're gonna continue getting to the $500 phones and, 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 and never getting a flagship phone. I never knew what the hell a flagship phone was until this is the first one I ever got. I've always bargain shop when it came to the phones. And I'm sitting here, I'm messing with it. I'm like, God damn, I see why my shit ain't the way that it's supposed to be. Because I'm looking at all of the things that this shit can do. But you'll never be in a prominent position. You'll never be in a prominent place in life if you continue to say in your mind that I don't deserve it. Period. This house right here that I'm renting. Yo, I'm serious. I'm like, yo, man, I got to get something better. Period. I got to do better. The car that I'm driving, I got to do better. I'm always thinking that way. I'm always thinking that way. But every now and then, man, that negative, that PTSD is real. And it comes in and it hits me like a ton of goddamn bricks. It really does. And I can hear, I'm not a religious person, but I'm just saying for the sake of the conversations, so y'all can understand where I'm coming from. But I don't believe in the devil, but I can, I can hear whispers of deceit in my ear. Man, you don't deserve that. Why you working out? You ain't gonna never get as big as those dudes that you see in the YMCA. You never gonna be healthy. You don't deserve that. Man, why you doing this? Why you doing that? It's a bunch of y'all in the comment section, man, that um leave some really positive shit, man. And I think his name is Coach Keller. I don't. I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name because this is just off the dome. I I, I just read your, your comment in the comment section of one of the videos, and you said every man should at least own one suit. And that shit hit me like a ton of bricks because my mother. I was bored up. Even though I went through my ghetto phase, phase, and and, and 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 lived in the hood and all of that, right? But originally, I was brought up, and my mother showed me how to tie a tie, and I had V-neck sweaters and and all types of stuff. I had multiple suits, even though those suits was for me to go to church. I still own suits, plural. But as a grown man, I can honestly say I don't own a suit, and. One of the reasons why is because, well, two. One of the reasons why is because of the fact that suits make me itch. And the second one is going along with the PTSD. I never had a place. I never had to. I never was invited to a place where it required for me to wear a suit. Because those guys over there, those people over there, I don't want to deal with. They're snobs, they're this, they're that. In reality, what I'm saying is, I don't make the type of money to party with them. And even if, you know, let's say I did make the type of money, right? I don't have nothing to wear. So, thank you, brother. I will be purchasing the suit. Um, this time, I don't know. You know, I might just go and get me a suit. But I say the second, third, you know what I'm saying? Tailor made. Nothing but the best. I'm not going to live above my means. That's not what I'm saying. And that's the same thing with, with Pretty Ricky. I told him, hey, listen, man, make your decision. But make sure that you look out for yourself. And don't get buried. You know what I'm saying? Don't live above your means. Right? So, yeah, man. Yo, man, we going to make this shit happen, man. One way or the other gonna influence the youth in the most positive way. Shout outs to Pretty Ricky. Shout outs to me. Shout outs to you all, man. And um, y'all take it easy.